part three of the Buzz Bubble with Nick Law, Chief Creative Officer of RGA. Now back to our host, Kevin Kelly, on the Buzz Bubble. Nike Plus, one of the greatest examples. Um, how do you take something like that? It's been such a great success and create sustainability of, of, you know, definitely the population keeps growing, which is yeah. wonderful, but how do you, for lack of a better word, keep it fresh and, and, and keep them engaged on a new level? You manage, it like, you manage it like a product. So why this is an unusual example and why there aren't more of them is that typically marketers don't manage products. They, they come, come up with seasonal campaigns. So what they need to do from a campaign point of view is keep coming up with fresh ideas on top of the theme. Right, so you're selling a hamburger, you have a central truth about what that hamburger, and you keep reinterpreting that truth in a way that feels fresh every season. That's very different to managing a software product. Right. And in fact, this is, this is the thing that stops marketing departments uh, managing software correctly, because they, don't, they approach it like campaigns. Now Nike is an, an exception because I think it's a design company and they understand they're very sophisticated from a marketing point of view and from a design point of view and a product management point of view. But, so what we've done with Nike, Nike Plus, is that, is that it hasn't been a seasonal sort of thing. Now there are campaigns that we might lay on top sure. of, the, of the platform, but the platform itself keeps refining itself. I mean the latest sort of uh, version shift, dramatic version shift has been from a platform that depends on a sensor in a shoe speaking, or a, a, a chip in a shoe speaking to a sensor in a nano to an iPhone download, which uses accelerometer and GPS. So you don't need the hardware anymore, you just need ah. it, right? So what Nike has said there is, you know, um, we're a service company, not just a, you know, you can, we'd prefer it if you run with Nike shoes, but if you have New Balance and you want to use our, our service and do that. So they're thinking more like software developers it's and an open system. Yeah, it's, an, uh, it's mo a more open system and, and, it's, and it'll grow as a result of that and it has done. I mean, the, the, G, the, the app has been very successful. But it's a very different way of looking at, it's not even marketing, really. it's product development. So that's the other thing is that not only are we not doing advertising now, but it's even questionable whether we're doing marketing. We're creating things that market themselves in a way. Um, but it's a very, it's a, it's a different shift. And, and so for me, like when, you get, when we go to the award shows, we will enter Nike Plus and award shows this year because we think that this version change is actually more profound than, than an ad for a hamburger from, from last season to this season. We think it's a more profound sure. change because it's not just a sort of th uh, building on a theme, it's a, ch it's a change of functionality of habit and everything. But, but my, as marketers, most of the juries will look at it and say, oh, we've already judged this. Mm. So, so they're looking at our world through the keyhole of advertising. But I think, I think um, something you mentioned is it's an open system and it's, you, know, you don't have to use Nike shoes anymore. But I, I think the soft sell in advertising is where we're all going. You know? right, like you yeah. said, it, the commercial that just says, this is great, I'm cool, so buy what I'm using is just heading out the door. Yeah. Um, so it seems like it's going to be a very successful direction. You know? um, I'm using my other sneaker, but I check in and, and by the way, there's this soft sell of Nike, Nike, Nike. Yeah, yeah. And once you're in that system, you know, there'll be other products that are aligned with that, with that sort of currency and, you know. Let's talk about That's Not Cool. Mm -hmm. Great campaign, great uh, cause. How did that come about? And, and it's also a real challenge to reach that group we've seen over right. and over. Is, yeah, you yeah. Know, to reach yeah. that age range without preaching is, is a challenge. And yeah. It seems like it was a quite a success. Yeah, I think, I think it has been. It was a while ago when we first launched that or when we first started to work with the Ad Council. I think I'm right in saying that we were the first like digital agency for the Ad Council to engage. So they obviously recognize that this age group, which was young, very young teenagers, uh, were not spending a lot of time on TV or if they were, then it was supplemented heavily with digital. Right. Tools. And, and the problem exists in that digital space. It also exists separate from the parents' world. So there's right. this whole world that goes on, which makes it very difficult to tell kids what to do. You need to actually become a part of that world and, and guide the conversation as opposed to wag the finger. So that was the approach. And uh, you know, from a sort of artifact point of view, 
rather than coming out with some TV spots and then figuring out how those TV spots sort of extend into the online, it's the hub starts as, as on the web and in mobile. And then we supported that, that, those sort of platforms with TV spot, radio, you know, print, classic advertising, but they're all pointing towards the platform. So it was, again, it was, it was living up to our model of, let's figure out how to change the behavior and then we'll figure out what to say not the other way around. Right. Yeah. That was one of the things we were talking to Perry Fair last week over at Gray, and he said the things that, I asked him what surprised him the most, is that people, including his clients, are not engaging this, uh, embracing integration, you know? Yeah. And it's like, a, like you said, we didn't start with an ad and then build some other stuff. We started with this and said, well, what are all the spokes that can reach out? And it's right. yeah. well, really surprising that the rest of the ad world is yeah. not just, Come on, let's do this. Why? Because let's you know, think like that from day one. And but then we're not organized like that. Our industry right. hasn't grown up like that, and how the agencies are sort of divided is similar to how clients are divided internally. Um, you know, Perry. I know Perry. He's a really smart guy, and if his clients aren't giving him that opportunity, then they're missing out on something. And but what, but what's stopping them doing that would probably be that you've got your you've got people that are responsible inside an organization for managing advertising and people inside the organization they're responsible for managing digital and they're sort of close to IT which is so yeah that was always a funny just happened to be physically near each other juxtaposition like the IT guy kind of, would run yeah. the website it's like that's it's, right it's because it's all just wiring he knows how to put a cat five things. right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the and there may have been a time when it was sort of like that you know but it's just well, they were, there's only because they, they were the physically know how to put it on yeah. the web. It had nothing to do with, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, graphics and messaging. Yeah. And, no, I, whatever you have, I'll put it up there. And yeah. I'm the web guy. <laughs> for some reason, because, well, because the industry had been pretty stable for a while, as far as the mediums are concerned, that they forgot that they were already dealing with technology. So when people say, oh, you guys figure out the technology, it's right. you're, you're figuring out the technology too. The technology you're trying to figure out is television. And it's a very it's a very powerful technology. It's sort of singular in its use. You know, you can only do one thing in front of a television. You know, although there are more complicated interfaces now. Yeah. But generally, television you receive, and it, and is a video-based storytelling format. The difference is our technologies are more supple, and and change very quickly, and are networked. And to me, that is the most important thing. Is the whole is the network thing. Because so you network a bunch of technology, a bunch of screens. Then, the, then it becomes a two-way thing. You affect the media as much as you are affected by it. Yeah. And, and that changes your whole relationship to media, and it changes the way uh, you should market in that media. Because it goes from one context, which is interruption, to multiple contexts. You know, delivering of information, delivering of e-commerce, social, mobile, interruption, you know, also right, small, right. short storytelling, long storytelling, you know. Uh, uh, applications sort of enabling technologies they help you it becomes so and that sort of complexity in the in these new technologies is what makes the traditional world say oh it's all technology because I can't really figure it all out right now but it's not like TV TV's not technology TV is just natural it's somehow it's our we were born with television so we I don't even look at it like a light being switched on. Right, it's a button and it's up yeah. and down and that's all. Yeah. There's a keyboard, it's technology, I don't want to mess with right. it. Yeah, I need to know key commands. In <laughs> when we talk about platforms and, you know, when you approach a new brand, you, you say, well, what's the platform? Where do the existing platforms come into play? So you've got Facebook, you've got Twitter. Do you say, you know, well, it's better for us to build something that's standalone or build it within this Existing social media infrastructure yeah. and the platform they've already got in place. Where does that balance? I think more struck? and more we uh, augment existing platforms, and the reason we do that is, is the same reason that traditional agencies buy media on networks. You know, is is because they they aggregate many eyeballs, and you know, and Google and Facebook, you know, and you know, and these sort of emerging platforms uh, are, are aggregating millions of people. They're huge. So, and and they're already a part of people's lives. They're right. a part of people's habits. So, so it makes sense to become a part of it. The trick is, you don't want to you don't want to do you don't want to interrupt them. You want to enhance their experience. So, if you're going to be in a social space, you need to create objects or utilities that are inherently social, not just 
ads. Right. That's something you said I was going to say. You didn't say it was a platform's got to be utilitarian and it's got to be community. It's got to have community. Yeah. So. Yeah. And especially if that's the environment you're in. So, you know, search is different because search, um, you know, when you're playing in, the, um, in search as a platform, it's all about sort of contextual, you know, uh, uh, results, results that match someone's stated intent. Right? I'm looking for jackets, you know, so I match. That's a very different thing, but it's, and it's a different context. And, and understanding the context of the platforms is the most important thing. It, you know, uh, the worst mistake that, that, that agencies can make is treat these platforms like any other channel. Right. right. So, oh, we'll just take the 30 second spot and turn it into a video banner and stick it in a social network. So, oh, really? Right. <laughs> Which you could have very easily fallen into when Nike Plus became so successful and all the eyeballs, you could have just said, oh, make it a media site. No, you yeah, didn't. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It stayed pure and um, they didn't feel like they were being sold to. Right, exactly. They're coming free, there for. It's got community, it's got utility. Yeah, it's hard, you know. And this it, is a great it, system. It makes me system. run, so that's going to, uh, everyone wins. Yeah, right. Um, now, how about mobile as, as the creative guy? What, what's your thoughts on mobile? Is it, you know, just another space? Is it a bother? Is it a opportunity? Is it a. Well, speaking know, of context, I think mobile is a sort of the, the most densely contextual uh, sort of experience. Because you've not just got, uh, you know, you've not just got time, you've got space. Uh, so location becomes very important, and context changes depending on, uh, you know, when you fire up your phone. Waiting outside an elevator for, because you can't possibly not look at your phone for 60 seconds is a very different sort of consumption moment right, that's true. than sitting on a, 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 you know, a train going up to Albany where you're just trying to kill time. Right. So understanding that is really, I think, essential. All phones are GPS enabled now, you know, or at least most of them. Almost everyone's going to have a smartphone soon. So it'll not, and it'll be a media channel, but it'll be, it'll be applications that have all these enabling technologies. So mobile is everything, you know, condensed and and taken with you. Um, all the things that prevented it from being everything are about the, you know, the width of the pipe. And, uh, and, and, and your ability to consume rich media have, are disappearing. Yeah. So it becomes the richest opportunity and the most flexible and supple one. So you, can, yeah, you, ask, you ask the most basic question is why would someone care about this at this moment? If you answer that, then, then that's fine. The problem is from an industry point of view, we haven't, ever, we haven't had to ask that for 50 years. 50 years we didn't ask why someone was going to watch this because they're watching it because they're watching the Super Bowl, or they're, want, or they're watching it because they're watching I Love Lucy. Uh, we can't. That's not. We can't piggyback on the on the back of other media anymore, because people are controlling the media. So then it becomes, uh, you know, mobile is is to me the ultimate in in multiplying context. Sure. Yeah. So every opportunity and you know is there. You just need to know where to fit it. That's it for part three with Nick Law. Take a look at what's coming up on part four. Maybe the group of people who still use mice and the yes. group of people who just do this. Well, well I, I think no. right, right now when we design sites, then I think we look, our starting point is what would it be like on an iPad? Because what that forces <laughs> is a sort of radical simplicity and intuitiveness, and then we can reverse engineer it back to a browser environment, you know, with a mouse. To me, that's, it's easy to do that and to start with your classic website structure yeah. with global yeah, nav, feature space, ta ta ta. It's like, now let's think about this as an application. Yeah. Next week on the Buzz Bubble.